I don't know about you, but when I use handbrake, this is how it makes me feel. The days of punching myself in the face over handbrake are finally over. I found a new video converter that is way more powerful, way easier to use, and it's still free. I can't wait to show you. It's called Shutter Encoder. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live, live streaming. streaming. Have you ever heard of a program called FFmpeg? It's a very powerful video converter that is powered by command lines. And that's what makes it sort of a downer is that it's very difficult to use because you have to type in a string of text to get the result that you want when you do your video conversions. That's where Shutter Encoder comes into play. If this is FFmpeg, Shutter Encoder resides on top of it. And when you send a command into Shutter Encoder, it actually instructs FFmpeg to generate the file. So there's been a whole bunch of very intense thought by, by the programmer Paul Pacifico to make the interface as easy to use as possible so that you can get the result you want quickly. So let's dig into the interface so that you can get kind of a global perspective and understand how to get your videos converted into VP9. Yes, let's go. Okay, here's the software. And at first glance, you're probably like, what's up, Victor? This tiny little rinky-dink software package, there's not much to it. Couldn't be that powerful. Let me tell you, dude, don't judge a book by its cover. This software is super powerful. Okay, when opening it up for the first time, click the gear in the upper left-hand corner, and it'll open up the sub page, and make sure that you select Auto for Set GPU Decoding 2, okay? Basically, what that does is it makes the system use your graphics card versus your CPU to process the video conversion if possible. Now click the blue text and designate a default download folder location, okay? That's number two. Now the different areas of the program are fairly cut and dry. The top section is how you upload files or folders containing video files for conversion. The choose function area is how you designate the codec that you're converting to. And then we have the output source location. That's where the file will be saved to after the conversion has been made. And then below that is the progress status, cut and dry. Adding video files into Shutter Encoder is really easy. I've got a folder here containing about 60 individual video files. And if I drag the folder right into this gray square here, bam, it just drops them in with ease. Handbrake, whew, it's not this easy, let me tell you. So I'm gonna hit the clear button. I just wanted to show you that capability. I'm gonna go into the video folder here and just grab a single file. Uh, here's one called Peace. I'll just drop that one in, okay? The next piece is the part that is the blood and guts of this program. This is incredible. See this down arrow selector for choose function? If I click this, this highlights all the capability that this program can do. So for example, it can do way more than just converting video codecs. It can cut a video, it can replace audio, it can do this conform, merge, extract, subtitles, video inserts. Uh, it can convert sound. So for example, if you're using um, Lyorian board and you wanna play sounds directly from Lyorian board, you can only use OGG files. So if you have a bunch of MP3s, you can convert MP3 into OGG or vice versa. Uh, here's your video codecs for editing. So there's a lot of alpha channel codecs in here. And if we scroll down, and there's a lot more stuff, as we scroll down, we've got storage codecs, we've got, you can rip DVDs, and at the bottom, you can actually grab videos from YouTube, which is incredible. So I'm gonna go back up here, and I'm gonna select VP9. When you make the selection, you get this, another window that pops up with even more control, but I wanna let you know that upon you selecting this function, then you have these file extensions to choose from. And this, these two choices, the function and the extension, designate what kind of parameters you have to change on the right-hand side. So for example, you may not have the same amount of advanced features when you select VP9 with MKV versus WebM, okay? So, there's an awful lot of decisions that you need to understand to make when you make these choices. So in this example, let's pretend that this video format had an alpha channel. And so 
I want to make sure that enable alpha channel is selected. So I just click that dot and now this file will have an, an alpha channel and there will be transparency when I convert it. So there is a cue just like handbrake. So if I put in four files right into the window here, if I was to click start function, the conversions would occur one after another, okay? But you can click this hamburger next to the start function button and the naming of the button changes to add to queue. Now, if you click add to queue, those four video files will show up here. Now, what's kind of cool about this is if I make this wider, you can see the command line instructions for each conversion here in this middle column. This is what you have to manually enter into FFmpeg to make the conversions work. So, like I said, the queue is fairly cut and dry and easy to use. Okay, let's talk about where the files get saved. And as a default, it will save it to the same folder that the original resides in. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, Victor, didn't we designate the default location as downloads? Yes, we did. If you select the circle next to change, the, the folder that appears is that default location. So at that point, you can either change the location or just hit select folder and boom, it's the downloads folder, which was the default you define. Also, you may wanna check off the open destination at end. That way, after the encoding occurs, it'll take you right to the right folder where the file resides. This is not the only tool that I've talked about at this channel. I've got a video about a free version of Photoshop that resides online. I've got another video about converting your voice, adding echo and different kinds of special effects to your voice. There's a whiteboard capability that I talk about. And there's another one that's absolutely fantastic where you can type in words and have it converted into the voice of famous Hollywood stars online. An amazing tool for your live stream. Anyway, I hope to see you over there at these videos. Just click this link right here and I'll catch you over there. Stay strong and keep fighting. Remember, don't ever give up with your channel. You will succeed.